Hello everyone, this is Eddie the Magic Monk. If you guys remember in the last tutorial, I showed you guys how to do a hard trigonometry question. And one of my subscribers actually found out another way of doing it and I have his permission to share his answer with you guys. So if you haven't done this um, question yet, feel free to go through it, see what answer you come up with. And basically uh, what you have to do is you have to draw a line starting from somewhere along this line AB. And this line has to go through point E to reach somewhere on line BC. Okay, so this is one line that satisfies that criteria. This could be another another line that satisfies that criteria. And we want to find the shortest possible line that satisfies the criteria. So uh, feel free to go through it and come back when you're done. Okay, so let's draw the line and let's try to um, create two triangles from this line. So uh, if we break this line up into two segments, we have a triangle, a right angle triangle in the top, and we have another right angle triangle in the bottom. And um, if I draw this triangle out, these triangles out separately, Okay, so if I do that at the bottom, so I have a long line, I have triangle at the top, and I have a triangle at the bottom. Then what you realize is that both of these angles are 90 degrees. Both of these angles are the same uh, using the rules from uh, simple geometry. And both of these angles are the same which means these two are similar triangles. Okay, so if I label this length as three meters as stated in the question, and this length is one meter, and let's label this length as X, this length as Y, and we're trying to find L, which is the whole length of the, the hypotenuse of the two right angle triangles. Um, then what we can do is we can use Pythagoras. So Pythagoras theorem states that C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Where C is the longest side, A and B are the two shorter sides of a right angle triangle. So let's split up L into two sections. So the first section is over here. So let's call this C and this side A and this side B of the right angle triangle. So C squared equals uh, 3 squared plus X squared. So C is equal to the square root, square root of 3 squared plus X squared. So it's the square root of 9 plus X squared. Okay, and let's now do the bottom section, which is from here to here. All right, and um, again, we have ABC of the bottom triangle. So C squared equals A squared plus B squared equals Y squared plus one squared. One squared is just one. So C equals the square root of Y squared plus one. Okay, so the total length, the total length of L, L is equal to um, this C plus this C, so square root of 9 plus X squared plus square root of Y squared plus 1. And you can see that. Um, we have two variables. Now when an equation has two variables, uh, it becomes quite hard to differentiate it. Okay, so um, let's express uh, one of these variables uh, using the other variable. 
So if we have a look at these two triangles, they're similar triangles. They're similar triangles. So what that means is uh, because they're similar triangles, the ratios between their sides will be the same for both triangles. So the ratio of one side to another side, so 3 divided by x will be the same as y divided by 1. Okay, so therefore what that means is y is equal to 3 over x. All right, and if we substitute that into this equation, okay, so L is equal to square root of 9 plus x squared plus uh, instead of writing y, I'm going to write 3 over x. Alright, and now I can simplify the right hand side. So the right hand side is now, um, sorry, the bracket uh, is now 9 over x squared plus 1. Okay, and let's try and combine these two fractions so I will get L equals the square root of 9 plus x squared plus the square root of now since 1 is the same as x squared over x squared and we got 9 over x squared plus 1 okay so let's try and simplify that more so we will get 9 plus x squared over x squared. Remember when you're adding fractions, the bottom numbers stay the same. So then we will get um, 9 plus x squared in the square root plus square root of, right, we got right here we have, let's make it clear, we have a square root of the whole fraction Right, that's what we have, which means it's the square root of the top of the fraction over the square root of the bottom of the fraction. So if you haven't seen that before, um, it's one of the basic index laws. Okay, so now um, the bottom of the fraction is just the same as x, so square root of 9 plus x squared plus square root of 9 plus x squared over the square root of x squared is just x and now we can simplify this by factorizing out the 9 plus x squared so 9 plus x squared square root times 1 plus 1 over x All right so now if L is equal to that what is the derivative of L? All right. The reason why we find the derivative is because once we have found the derivative, um, we know that the maximum and the minimum of a function occurs when the derivative of that function equals zero. So in order to find the uh, minimum, right, the shortest possible line, we need to differentiate it. So let's, when we differentiate, okay, if we have two functions multiplied by each other, then we write the function as the product of two functions, u times v, and we use the products rule, which says that, um, wait, so if l equals u times v, then l dash is equal to u times v dash plus v times u dash. Okay, so uh, let's write out what u is. So u is equal to the square root of 9 plus x squared. Um, and u dash, uh, just before we do u dash, u is equal to the square root of that. So it's 9 plus x squared to the power of a half. Right, that's just another way of writing a square root. So u dash is equal to a half times 9 plus x squared to the power of negative a half. 
times 2x if you guys remember the Chang rule for differentiating um, so now uh, u dash is equal to half right we got 9 plus x squared at the bottom to the power of a half right because the negative uh, index you can just move it to the bottom of the fraction and we have times 2x on the top okay so simplifying that we have 2x over 2 times square root of 9 plus x squared uh, cancel out the 2 divided by 2 and we're left with x over square root of 9 plus x squared alright now let's do V uh, so V is equal to 1 plus 1 over X which is the same as 1 plus X to the power of negative 1 then we can do V dash is equal to uh, the derivative of 1 becomes nothing 0 so it's just negative X uh, to the power of negative 2 which is negative 1 over x squared okay now substituting all of this back into the derivative formula L dash is equal to u times v dash so square root of 9 plus x squared that's u times v dash so times uh, negative 1 over x squared plus v which is 1 plus 1 over x times u dash which is uh, times x over square root of 9 plus x squared alright and can we simplify this uh, I'm just going to rewrite that first part so L dash is equal to negative square root of 9 plus x squared over x squared plus uh, on the right hand side I'm just going to rewrite it as x over square root of 9 plus x squared times 1 plus 1 over x All right you can you're allowed to write it like that because multiplication is commutative okay so what can we do with this well we know that um, in order to find the maximum and minimum max or minimum occurs occurs when L dash is equal to 0 so 0 is equal to all of that alright 0 is equal to all of this and uh, now we want to try and solve it so we just have to keep simplifying it until we can think of a way to get to x alright so if we uh, we can see it's 0 on the left which makes things a little bit easier alright so the thing is uh, what we're gonna do is now multiply both sides by 9 plus uh, x squared in a square root so I'm going to multiply the left hand side by square root of 9 plus x squared times 0 so that's just gone to 0 again and then I have negative uh, no, square root of 9 plus x squared times the square root of 9 plus x squared Uh, and we can see this is going to simplify uh, because the square root times the square root of the same thing just gives you what's in the square root and then on the right hand side because we have square root times square root of 9 plus x squared times the square root of uh, sorry I'll just show you so square root of 9 plus x squared times x over square root of 9 plus x squared um, times 1 plus 1 over x right the square root of 9 plus x squared just cancels out with the bottom because they're both the same so 
same thing divided by the same thing equals 1 so therefore it's 0 equals negative of 9 plus um, x squared over x squared plus x times 1 plus 1 over x all right so we're nearly nearly finished simplifying so then I'm going to write equals uh, 0 equals uh, negative 9 over x squared plus x squared over x squared plus x plus uh, x over x right because I'm just expanding it now and I have a fraction so I can split it up into two fractions with the same denominator uh, so therefore I have 0 equals negative 9 over x squared plus 1 plus x uh, plus 1 okay uh, one little mistake when I expanded this I should have made this a negative right because negative times positive is negative so this should be minus right hopefully you guys pick that up okay so uh, the plus one and minus one cancel each other out so zero equals negative nine over x squared plus x okay so now if we multiply by uh, x squared on both sides I will get uh, zero equals negative nine plus x cubed right if I multiply both sides by x squared right so 0 equals uh, negative 9 over uh, negative 9 plus x cubed and so x cubed is equal to 9 alright x cubed is equal to 9 and what's x? x is the cube root of 9 the cube root of 9 and now once we have x look at what the formula was the formula of L was this formula okay so let's now substitute that into the formula so L is equal to um, square root of actually let's just copy and paste this down the bottom so you guys don't get mixed up L is equal to that which means L is equal to the square root of 9 plus uh, the cube root of 9 so the cube root of 9 to the power of 2 times 1 plus 1 over the cube root of 9 and I'm just going to type all this into a calculator and the answer is 5.406 which is what we got in our last tutorial now in order to verify that this is a minimum you need to find the double derivative of L and check that when you substitute um, X into the double derivative you will get uh, a number bigger than zero so I will let you guys do that part Thanks for watching, see you next time.